What's going on guys, Ali Nadam here for Shamshir Sound. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the differences between each voicing mode, why you'd want to use one over the other, and how to get the most out of each one. So Shamshir Sound is a project I launched a while back, and I'm going to be uploading weekly tutorials. Regardless of what genre that you're making, you're going to be able to learn a bunch of tools, a bunch of knowledge to improve your production arsenal. So Without further ado, remember to smash the like button. If you guys have any questions, comments, any requests, feel free to drop a comment below. So let's jump right in. So in Native Instruments Massive, we have the voicing section here. We have the unison, which means how many voices can we play at the same time, which will apply to all three of these modes. And we have the basic structure here. We have polyphonic, which means you can play more than one note at the same time. So let's go ahead and play these examples, these patterns I have. So polyphonic allows you to make your chords, allows you to play more than one note, regardless of what you're doing. When you move on to something like monophonic or mono rotate, monophonic is going to be one note at a time. So this is going to be for like your big room leads. It's going to be for something that you don't want it to be like a chord structure. Now, it can still be a wide sound. It doesn't mean that it's going to be in mono in the center. You do have control over the width. And to have control over the width, kind of a side note here. For example, if we go to our mono sound, so let's go ahead and play that. The mono sound, I have two voices. And you can see here it's wide. So in order to make your sound wide, you need to turn on the pan position and bring that up. You could go all the way, but trust your ears, maybe somewhere in between or somewhere near the, the end. So I had it around here. And you can add some more fatness by adding unison. This is basically detune, the unison spread. But we're not going to focus on that right now. We're just going to focus on spreading the pan position of these uh, of this sound. So let's go ahead and play this. This is going to uh, showcase monophonic, and we'll talk about the trigger as well. Also, keep in mind, I have this glide here. I have glide at 42, so let's go ahead and play it. So the monophonic mode allows you to play with the glide. So when you want to have notes um, gliding to each other, monophonic is definitely going to be your, your go-to. Now, the thing about monophonic is that there are some different modes you can utilize. There is trigger always. Trigger always will start um, a new note, and it will basically use the glide to go to the next note and determine how much glide there's going to be. Um, if you use legato, this is pretty much the standard. If you use legato, legato will play one note, but you can sustain a note. You can hold a note down and uh, play a new note. And instead of playing the new note, it just kind of transfers to the new note. So it's hard to explain. I'm going to go ahead and play back our demo. So here is mono legato. We have the voicing, everything the same, but we've switched to legato. And I have it with these... Uh, these transitions here so you guys can get an idea. So mono legato allows you to go from one note to the other without actually playing the initial part of the note. It's going to just go ahead and sustain to the new note. And depending on the vibe you're going for, depending on what the intent is, Obviously, you're going to have to experiment, but legato is used for that. I don't personally use legato a lot. I usually use the trigger um, because it just depends on the sound, the intent with the sound. And the last but not least is going to be your legato triller. So keep in mind, all of these are going to also really depend on what you set in the glide section. The glide section is really important. And the differences between these two is going to be one that is equal to, uh, regardless of the note distance between each other. The rate will make it a bit more dynamic. So the, the rate will actually change the glide such that 
if the notes are closer to one another or more distant to one another, it's going to be a bit more dynamic. But again, test it out. And depending on what macros and pitch modulation and automation you have, there is no perfect set rule. So you're going to want to experiment when you do work on this. Last but not least is mono triller. So we covered polyphonic, which is going to be more than one note chords. We covered mono, which is going to be one note at a time. And you can involve glide and go from one note to the other, kind of like a big room lead or a, you know, electro house lead. We covered mono legato, which is going to do your going from one note to the other. But when you do do glide, it basically glides to the note. So if you do not put these notes longer, it's just going to play back normally. You only utilize it when you have overlaps. So when you do have overlaps, that's when you get something um, that kicks in the mono legato. So let's go ahead and play the last one, mono triller. So mono triller is going to be, it's being used a lot recently. Um, if you listen to some of the tracks on the Revealed label, um, Kura, Ollie James, they're using legato triller a lot. And so triller is cool because legato, the thing about legato is that when you play one note and it's overlapping to the other note, it basically stops at that point. But legato triller keeps the momentum going on. So what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and explain. Let's play it back. In this example, I have here, you know, this note, but then also this note continues. So it would go up, then back down. Again, here, it'll go up, then back down. And that's the thing about mono uh, triller is that when we have the legato triller, you'll get this effect, kind of like an Arabic effect, or if you want to make those cool, like, wavy leads. <laughs> So really cool, you can get some really ethnic vibes just by tweaking a few things. All we did was just, if we imagine this was an initialized preset, we just made it two sounds. We made it a bit wider. We added the legato triller. And this can really take and elevate your patterns, your MIDI patterns. If you combine that with moving around some of the notes, creating some uh, funk, some groove, you can really give motion. And that's the whole idea of using um, the different trigger modes and the glide is to give motion to your track because sometimes if notes don't have motion they can sound too sterile they can sound too robotic and so i hope you guys can really incorporate this into your uh, techniques um, in the future i'm going to cover more regarding glide and more regarding the voicing sections as well but this was just to give some basic coverage over the different modes polyphonic monophonic and mono rotate and just to summarize again for you guys, polyphonic for your chords, more than one note, monophonic going to be one, one note at a time, and mono rotate, same thing, but it is a special version, which mono rotate will interrupt. So mono rotate, if you play one note and you're afraid that you don't want it overlapping over the next note. So let's give you an example. If you had a drum sound in Massive that you made and you don't want the click to be you want the click to not you know not overlap you want to always interrupt with a new note whatever is playing regardless of the release regardless of how long it is if you played a five second drum click but then you click it again the drum will reinitialize it'll play it again and interrupt it so that is what you're going to want it for if but again sometimes sounds do change when you use that sometimes the characteristic can change and sometimes depending on your trigger mode and your glide it might not be what you want. So, um, for instance, I had an 808, uh, 808 sound that I made in Massive, and uh, I was actually using monophonic. You'd think I'd use mono rotate because it would interrupt each click, but it just didn't sound the way I wanted it to. So, at the end of the day, just trust your ears, and uh, I hope you guys like this tutorial. Remember to smash the like button, drop a comment, Get subscribed because I'm going to be uploading weekly tutorials and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.